Bienvenue à l'aéroport de Zurich. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. I am not in Philadelphia, as you can see. I'm actually in Germany and I've come all this way. Instead of Watches and Wonders in Switzerland, I thought I'd come and share with you an exclusive behind the scenes look at where one of my Grail watches was actually made. We're gonna go there in a, just a second. I'll do a wristwatch check. We did arrive yesterday, was wearing my GMT, but today the Spa Hotel, which is amazing that I'm staying at, at the top of this hill, it happens to look <laughs> like the Bond villain lair from Majesty's uh, Secret Service. So therefore I had to do a bit of a Bond style nylon strap there from Worcester County Watch Club. This is of course my Tudor Submariner. Look. At the hotel room. It's huge. It's like an apartment. I've got a balcony and everything. Bathroom that never ends. Beautiful walk-in uh, shower there. Look at that. Oh, so clean. Um, but have a look at this balcony. Just peace and quiet. No, no traffic. No police sirens. No fire engines and chaos. Just ah, peace and quiet. And there, you see there. That is the Black Forest. It's not every day you get to go and see where your Grail watch was designed, produced. We are, of course, talking about the Hanhart factory. There it is behind me. The sun is coming out, gracing us, blessing us with its presence. So I'm going to go in and take a look inside. And you are the CEO, uh, managing director of Hanhart, of yeah. a beautiful brand. Yes. And I remember when it was, I think it was 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. I was Googling how to make the best coffee in the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that's where I found your channel. Right. No, just kidding. Right. Back then, I, I found a video of, of you where you already back then did a Grail watch video where you had the 417S in there. Yeah. And it took us six years to realize that plan because we saw your video and that got us as well excited, excited for, oh. for, for making this model. Yeah. It took us a couple of years. We needed to, in here in Gutenbach, sort, sort a couple of things out. Almost at the end of the design process, I said, we need to get in touch now with Tristano as well. Mm -hmm because he made such a great video. And for us, it's a great honor to yeah. have you here. Your video was one of the starting points of, of this really iconic model. For those new to the channel, or maybe you missed my reviews of this heritage brand in the past, here is a quick crash course in their history and why they are just so important. Hanhart became world renowned for its mastery of the chronograph complication first in stopwatches and then wristwatches. And we'll take a look at some examples in just a moment. However, for me and many other watch collectors and connoisseurs, it also became famous for the production of the world's most influential military chronographs during both the pre and post-war period. While the German Air Force would famously issue time-only fliegers to its airmen and pilots, for their more senior officers and the most elite pilots, Hanhart chronographs were chosen. This distinction meant that some of the most highly decorated ace pilots in the world would wear Hanhart. After the war, they would continue this tradition, eventually catching the eye of movie star, style icon, and motor racing enthusiast, Steve McQueen. But unlike the Hoyer Monaco, which was deliberate product placement, McQueen personally chose and purchased the Hanhart 417ES while in Germany taking part in a racing competition. This instantly gives the watch a cachet, a coolness and authenticity no marketing budget could ever buy. Okay, so we are in the museum and we're joined by Manfred Schwer and of course Felix, who we introduced earlier. How many years did Manfred work here? More than 60 years. 60 years, that's incredible. And you are the curator of this amazing collection. Um, would you please show us some of the, the treasures here. Well, the father, one zip. Ah, right. So this was the son. 
It was Willy Hanhart. Willy Hanhart was majorly responsible for the big success and growth of Hanhart in the 20s. What really got Hanhart rolling was when Willy went to a sports event uh -huh. and he saw that they only have a limited amount of stopwatches and there was the risk that the event is going to be cancelled because they don't have enough stopwatches. And that was when Willy said, let's reinvent the stopwatch, let's build a, an affordable stopwatch. That was where it all began as well for Hanhart. Mm -hmm. And uh, Manfred just said that Willy was as well called the stopwatch Pope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So in 1957, he joined Hanhart as a trainee and then as well made the final exam. Mm -hmm. uh, he then went to construction and always had a very good relationship with Willy Hanhart. You met the, the, yeah, the, the boss, legend. Yeah, boss. <laughs> yeah, right, of course. I'm a, I'm a good boss. A good boss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, got it. Got it. <laughs> for me, I'm good. For me, I'm good. Right, right. Hanhart already built wristwatches in the early 1900 to 1910 in Schwenningen mm -hmm. or until the 20s. Mm -hmm. Before they built the building here in Gutenbach, then in the 30s, when the first building in Gutenbach mm -hmm. was, was built, they started with their own movement development, with their own movement production. Mm -hmm. And that was when Hanhardt made the whole wristwatch themselves. Simon, we first met at, uh, when was it, in NYC? Yeah, it was actually at the Wind Up uh, that's, Watch Fair that's in New right. York. That's it right. Just, I think in, in November, December. Right, November, right? Yeah. yeah. And you were that's representing Han Hart, obviously. Of course. So where are you? This is the first, the first floor? Yes, yes, it's slightly above the entrance. It's the tool shop and uh, yeah, overhaul them. When it comes to the stopwatch, uh, we are really manufacturing with way over 90% in-house production mm -hmm. of our mechanical stopwatch movements. So the building, we should explain, each level, it's a bit like a kind of like a, a progression of how it goes with, you know, you got, you got the, the, the machines that make the machines, Absolutely, as yeah. you said. So the far you go up in our uh, three or four story building, uh -huh. the more um, finished uh, uh, the, the end product or the more right. uh, uh, end product you will see. Perfect. So this is basically where our master tool maker um, is, is working. Inside here is the eroding machine. This is where we do the um, one pusher or the mono pusher conversion in house. Uh -huh. um, our production manager, also master watchmaker, Andreas, um, he redesigned the cam system of the movement. It's impressive that you, you can take this and then customize, make a tool specifically for a job. Yeah. That's, that's like, I don't know how many yeah. brands I've seen do that. I mean, only the high end. Yes, yes, I, I, I would say so. I mean, and there's still some out there. Yeah. Um, um, so we're definitely not alone on that side, but I feel like the the, especially when it comes to our own in-house movements uh, on the on the stopwatch side, uh, I think it's quite impressive what yeah. we do in-house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this is the foundation of everything. These are all watches that we bought as Hanhard that we collected over time to have more and more pieces in the museum. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Manfred here as well. The first model that was introduced was the Caliber 40, mm -hmm. which is a monopusher chronograph. And that was in the late 30s. And Hanhardt was the only company doing a monopusher chronograph in Germany in these times. And monopusher, so you start, stop and reset the stop time with one pusher. And then the legendary Two pusher chronograph with the caliber 41 followed. Mm -hmm. The caliber 41 is very good to see with the asymmetric pusher distance. Well, the red pusher at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And in the 50s, because <laughs> you're looking at your <laughs> yeah, watch, yeah. in the 50s, the 417ES yes followed. Right. And that then had a symmetrical pusher distance, the, not the cathedral hands, but the more straight line right. hands. So the hands are a differentiation right, yeah. and as well the slightly smaller crown. And back then the diameters were all around 38 to 40 millimeters. There mm -hmm. were different cases. There was only ever around 500 of the original 417ES produced 
during the 1950s, making it super rare as well as a personal grail for me. That is until Hanhart brought it back in the original size a few years ago. I had the honor of co-designing and then later on with the standard version. The classically elegant, unpretentious look, functional robustness and accuracy pilots in combat depended on translated perfectly to deal with the rigors of the racetrack. In the late 1950s, the 417ES would evolve yet again, inspiring the design of the iconic Type 20 chronographs, which aficionados go absolutely crazy for, but this time used and made for the French Air Force. I recognize some of these machines from, yeah. other, from other factories. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, I recognize these. Yeah, these are the actual stamping Stamps. tools we, we, we talked so much about. All stamping tools have different sizes, right? Uh -huh. um, depending on uh, the, the, the shape of the stamped uh, um, uh, part, it also needs, it needs different pressures. Right. And this is uh, why we have three of them. Here you can see the raw material for the plates. We use brass, the levers on top, uh -huh. we normally use steel. Why? It's always good to have two different materials grind on each other uh -huh. or move on each other. And as well, the steel, we can harden in-house actually. I'll uh, show you that yes, as well. That, that is very impressive. You can see our pinion uh, uh, production. So it's using the oil as a kind of... As a protection for one for the tooling, mm -hmm. as well as it, it smoothens the cut itself, uh, we will have a better surface on top of it. We want to have an, an, an exact and the best possible um, surface, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of not losing energy on the way uh, to the balance. Wait, is that, a, is that an escapement wheel? It is, ah, it is. Wow, look at we that. do this ourselves as well. This, was, this actually took us uh, quite some time because of the surface. Our, our um, production manager, he and his team, he worked, I think, over a half a year on it to get it the way we need it. That's to be. great, half a year on just this little piece here. Many don't know that we also have an electronic stopwatch. Yes. And we also yeah. really produce them. Uh, they're made in Germany. So there's still mechanical components still involved? Absolutely. This, for example, is for an LCD uh, uh, display. Uh, uh, right. We stamp this ourselves. This is going to be for a battery. This uh, uh, really like, like almost historic machine, right? right. Uh, uh, it looks that way. Um, this is where we do our column wheels. Oh, wow. For our okay. uh, own in-house movements. We cut wow. them. This is like, a, even though it's very, very old, right? It's, it's uh, fully automized. If it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Uh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, uh, even though it's really, really old, it's very precise. Before. Before. And this is after. Yeah. And that's after. So, Trisano, this is um, the part of brass that we did not, where we cut out the, the pieces right. uh, in the stamping process. Oh, I can see the, uh, a bridge. Yes, absolutely. Right. And this uh, gets recycled, Cycled, right. of course. So we have different containers for each uh, material. Oh, this is all, oh, wow. This is all steel. So what is the difference? This uh, is civilian? The US Army wanted a größere Stoppuhren. So the US Army uh -huh. wanted bigger stopwatches. So of course. That, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, oh, Hanat, okay. Machen okay. Wir, machen yeah. wir. Uh, right. Army, okay. Kein Problem. <laughs> I got that. Yeah, so, yeah. Before the walking soldiers, the infantry, mm -hmm. the guys with the motorbikes went to check out unknown areas or where they expected to see some enemies and they drove with their motorbikes and stopped the time it took them to get to certain points so they can calculate, calculate the distance exactly right, Cal right. calculate the distance it is the same movement that is inside the wristwatch it's just turned 90 degrees so that you have the start and stop pusher on top it's a bit like the bull head chronograph. yeah exactly yeah right yeah. To give you an idea why militaries all around the world, medical industries, sciences and sporting event timing all kept using Hanhart and not other options out there is perhaps best demonstrated by a stopwatch found deep in the Hanhart archives. Sent in by a fan of the brand, it was found on the ocean floor after being lost at sea, miraculously, despite being covered in barnacles and with extensive water damage, all these years later, it was still able to function. I 
this is the CNC, this right? This is the, the modern CNC. The modern CNC. Yeah. I'm probably shouting because it is very loud, but you may have seen this in like a lot of the the, the Swiss the Swiss yeah. factories, Inter right? Swiss, yeah. yeah. So, so we basically can also do modern, right? It's, uh, oh wow, that was, a, that was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Here we call them nests, uh, like bird nests. The person in charge here can uh, reload or restock these nests while or during the machine is uh, running and drilling on the other side. So these are 12 front plates of our in-house movement. And now you see that the machine is um, changing the tool. What uh, we do on this machine, uh, um, so the, the components for our um, casings, for example, that we do in-house, we do some of our case bottoms ourselves, for example, we do all the levers uh, that um, makes it possible to have the asymmetric uh, pusher ah, on our right. older versions, right? Which is very important. Yeah. Right, 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 right. We do that in he uh, here as well. What's going on here? Here, this is ceramic materials, actually. And uh, we saw the stamping already, right? Yeah. And with the stamping tool, it's like this. You have like a stamping round part and then you have a deburr, right? The, the thing is that when you have the, uh, for example, the, the plate and then the levers are moving on top, you have to have a really smooth surface, right? In mm -hmm. order that it doesn't grind or anything. Mm -hmm. on top and that's what we're doing here. And this is the levers in both uh, wristwatches and pocket absolutely. watches. Absolutely, yes. Not pocket absolutely. watches, uh, I'm thinking uh, old but school. The, the stopwatch, yes, yeah, yeah, but yeah. also the levers for the asymmetric uh, pusher buttons. So it smells like a like a factory in here. This is this is very particular. What 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 happens in this room? Yeah, absolutely. It's the oil, right? Yes. And um, this tells where we are. This is the hardening process of mm -hmm. our uh, steel uh, levers. So I understand it would make them more resistant to the friction over time. Absolutely. Right, okay, Correct. got it, Absolutely. yes. Okay. Absolutely. And this is something that not many companies do, right? No, very, very, or, or I would say most companies will give these parts uh, ah, outside. So outside. outside, right, yes. right, 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 right. The manufacturing capabilities of Hanhart are a culmination of over a hundred years of experience. They also have a big geographical advantage too with the Black Forest region being the oldest manufacturing center for clocks and watches in Germany, as well as having the majority of the country's best watchmaking schools in the area that Hanhart has a long tradition of working with and directly hiring from. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. There's no cars, no nothing, no. <laughs> it's so different. Look, it's stunning, it's so uh, peaceful and so this is the back of the, uh, this is the back of the spa. It's so peaceful here. Let me just turn around so you can see I'm not a silhouette. Just me and the cows. <laughs> Where we are right now, here was the development oh, wow. center. This, this room. And he, oh, wow. worked, he worked here for 10 years. And this That's is as well, he, he says, where oh, lots yeah. of ideas Ten yard have been born. Ten years. Ten years, years he wow. was in that corner over in there. In that corner over there. <laughs> That's crazy. That's his, that's it's the good, same yeah. view. That's why my fist bump. Uh. <laughs> this, 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 this was his. This was his lunch, lunch break. Yeah. That's amazing. That is the eldest, eldest armband This beautiful. one, this one is the oldest uh, wristwatch that we have in here. It's all handheld in-house movements inside. So. It, the Sanssouci Souci and the one over here are both wrist alarm. Vibrates. Yeah, right. it, it vibrates. This was a spy watch that was produced in the times after war. Uh -huh. He said... It's he, a cold he thinks, war. The... Exactly. Right. Um, he thinks only about five pieces have been produced. It's not a real watch uh -huh. because there's a microphone inside ah, and the cable is going through the jacket. Right. to the inside and you have a recorder and it was recording on a wire. They don't know exactly but some secret service from the US is, is his... Ah, because they wanted to have a German watch. So it Would raised it less, Deutsche, less suspicious. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> you, you gotta see this. Yeah. So, uh, you can stop a hundredth of a second mechanically with that stopwatch. Most of them come really from a design perspective most of them come from a time when there was no 
electronics when there was no mm. quartz. So uh, there was a high demand for stopwatches. Mm. Hanhart did millions of stopwatches. You needed for everything you had a special purpose stopwatch. If it was a doctor, if it was any kind of right. sports, whatever. Yeah. What is Manfred's favorite piece in here? Grafenfeld Pilot. Yeah. Mine too, mine too, yeah. yeah. He says from a historical <laughs> perspective, it's yeah. definitely okay. the, the pilot's it's, it chronographs. Def it defined the whole brand, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a U-boat, the U-boat. Ah, yeah. And there's a film on, with, with the Schnurra on this on boat, there's, there's a film. A, there's a Hanhart in, yeah. in yes. the U-boat? In, in the movie, yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. I need to rewatch that. <laughs> I need to re I'll, I'll see it again. Please. Thank you, thank you. So this is where it happens. The uh, magic this is happens. where. For example, the Red, uh, red Lion. Uh, yes, uh, it was assembled here? Yes, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, We regulate from plus minus zero to plus eight. This is the hand up standard and we're very proud of it. And we actually really put a lot of effort in uh, achieving that. So they're basically uh, in the production or in the very end of the production process here on our um, 417 Reverse Panda. This has the AMT movement inside from Solita. So this movement, for example, as well, what they are really doing here is they, they at first regulate the watch, of course, with chronograph and with the chronograph setting off, that's where really the, the work has to be done as well. So right. basically also the chronograph um, settings itself has to be, um, you know, finely adjusted right. uh, to reach this standard for us. He's uh, one step further back, right? He already adjusted uh, uh, the movement and everything. This you can see on these printings, which really is cataloged for each watch each watch has his own birth certificate and he is now in the final step of um, setting or mounting the hands. And here you can see we have the runnings uh, with chrono and without chrono. Then of course as well um, the birth certificate will have all the testings that are done afterwards. After uh, the completion of the watch uh, we do around a seven day testing with with really a, a seven days. Yes, wow. yes, yes. Since we're shipping out worldwide, we really, really want to reduce the risk of watches coming back uh, to us. Uh, really, the owner uh, should have a piece that lives up to our standard. To see where it was put together, yeah. assembled, and yeah. regulated. This that's magic. Still, uh, after all these years, I feel the same. Yeah. Right, of yeah. course. At the end of um, this department uh, sits Michael. He's uh -huh. actually the person in charge of the atelier, as right. we call it. And uh, he is now doing an overhaul, uh, like a, we call it service après -vent, or after sales service in English. This is actually something that's probably also very unique in the watch industry. Our watchmakers don't only assemble the watches, they also all do after sale service. What is your favorite part? Favorite part is to get a, a damaged watch or watch is not working, uh, disassemble it, checking what's wrong with the watch, what's defect, and clean it, reassemble it, and mm -hmm. if the heart is, the, the, the balance is back ticking, that's one of the best parts. So it's like a challenge time. for you? Yeah, it's kind of a challenge. Servicing a watch, you can learn about where the weak spots of, mainly of the uh, of a movement maybe is something like that, and then you know where you have to special look on when you mount an, or craft a new watch. Right, right. Because I understand you have your own standards. Yeah, here. we have our standards, and the standards are going for, for new watches and also for the serviced watches. So we uh, regulate them to six positions, uh, from zero to eight plus eight seconds a day. Uh, it's like the cost uh, range of, right. uh, yeah. And then we do testing about about seven days wow, to okay. check the regulation. And is there a difference between regulating with the chronograph on and then off? Or? Yeah, there's a difference because uh, if we, we uh, start the chrono to the to the, the movement to the ground movement, there are about two wheels connected to the gear train, ah. so the amplitude will fall a bit down. And we we have a range of about thirty degrees that is allowed to to fall here. The factory was so big inside, we simply did not have enough time to shoot every step of every process. With many rooms being left unchanged since the glory days of the brand, making it feel almost like some kind of horological holy site frozen in time. Hidden somewhere deep in the seemingly endless corridors, 
was a secret room where Manfred, in his spare time, studies, meticulously collects, organizes and sorts the massive historical archives for future preservation. We were very privileged to share this room with you, a place even unseen by many of the current staff at Hanhart. This is where you, you, you did Only designs? The console John. This is his wow. drawing board, yeah, from the past. So old tools used yeah. to do drawings from the 50s, from the 50s, of the 50s, oh, the 50s yeah. Yeah. from the 50s. One of the oldest chronographs that we have in here with an original strap. He had a six-stelling number. Then the chronograph was in Greek. It's, oh, it was used in war. It's a six-digit number on the case back, uh -huh. and this indicates that it's watches from the times of war. Right, wow. What you see here yeah. was drawn on these boards by hand. So you can imagine when you look at the by details hand, wow. and when you look at the... <laughs> that's at crazy. The, how, how many things are on yeah, there. Yeah, that's you can crazy. imagine how much work it was. My God. Felix, you got to make a book and put all this stuff in a book. This yeah, is, we this should. Is, I, I'd I be, I, I, and then I want Manfred to sign it. <laughs> you know? So every trainee, when starting to work at Hanhart, everyone did an education or training mm -hmm. in the company, and every trainee needed to do a documentation mm -hmm. of what he did, what mm -hmm. he achieved, and he needed to do certain steps. And this is the oldest book of a trainee that we still have that uh, Manfred wow. collected, curated. And you can see it's, it's from a trainee born in 1932. In the books for watchmaking schools, Hanhard always had, had its part. Oh, look, look. We, we, yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> I know this. The bathroom upstairs, yeah, yes. Exactly. Oh my God, that's extraordinary. I, I should show this. this. <laughs> I mean, it's not often that you get to such iconic sinks in uh, the, the restroom. This is where the watchmakers would have washed their hands, because I presume they would have had very oily, exactly. you know, from all the, also the, the workers. The and, <laughs> these are so beautiful. Yeah. Felix, come on, let's reissue these. <laughs> yeah, and we, we have so many things where we so can work many in the past. Things. Yeah. So many beautiful watches. <laughs> and what, what I find so fascinating as I have well to take is a picture. <laughs> how many case variations there are. Yeah. There have been. It's just crazy. Sorry, I, I really have to take a picture, yeah, yeah, picture please, of this. Please. If you don't, I'm going to do a design like that. I'm, <laughs> one, I'm serious. I'm, I'm very serious. The, my God, that looks like a Nomos before Nomos, <laughs> Nomos even existed. <laughs> I had no idea you made so many. So many different models. Yeah. yeah. Most of the people know the, the pilot. These ones, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's, it's just no one ever told the story about these watches, you know? It's, so the story is there, but it has not been told yet, so. Right. I need that in my <laughs> house. You need, you, need to, you need to see that. Maybe I should stand next to it so you get an idea of the <laughs> scale. An idea of the scale, yeah. yeah. yeah he, needs, he just said you need to come over eight days only to visit right. Manfred so okay. that he can tell the whole story. Yes, <laughs> yes. nice. Let's okay. do it. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm happy to do that. I love it here anyway, so. Where we can, of course, take a lot from the stopwatch manufacturing as well over to, to the wristwatch is we do all the design work in-house. We have CAT drawing, we do the 3D files on our own. Um, then we have, because we have as well, I'm, I'm proud of the whole team, we have extremely experienced watchmakers. They're very good at what they're doing. We try to transfer as much as possible over to the wristwatch as well. We do a couple of things on our own. Mm -hmm. And what I think the most important part is, as well when we use movements from third parties because we know how to build movements, we know how to regulate movements. Mm -hmm. Of course, every watchmaker should know, yeah. but uh, I think we have a really good team that is regulating every movement to our own quality standards. One thing is we have a great heritage and a long history where we can always take lots of inspirations. So that is something that I, value a lot because it, you cannot recreate that. But for us, it's as well important to improve and to look to the future, to innovate. 
and we're right now as well working on a couple of technologies. We have a couple of things where we think that this is really, really good for our brand. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're extremely excited about. And we're not only looking at redoing historical models, but making them better. Right. And we as well want to reinvent ourselves with other models. And we have a couple of modern releases as well where we're looking at. And so we're really excited for, for the near future. So am I. I I have to say thank you so much for, for allowing me to look to, to share this and it's just amazing. Tristano, thank you so much for coming over. As I said, it's been a pleasure having you and a great honor. Thank you. No, the honor is mine. The <laughs> honor is mine. Seeing the original 417ES, along with so many amazing horological treasures, meeting the team who not only made my personal grail watch become a reality, but living legends like Manfred was truly something special. A once in a lifetime moment I will never forget. Hanhart today remains, in my opinion, one of Germany's greatest independent heritage watch brands, something for the true enthusiast and encapsulates everything that is just so good about German made watches. Knowing this brand is in the hands of such passionate, talented and wonderfully kind people makes it all the more compelling. Um, uh, strengthen, to strengthen the steel, uh -huh. right? Uh, so... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um... <laughs> the, the way he opened it, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, putting, I'm putting that in. I have to put that in. Okay guys, I bid you farewell from the Hanhart Museum and Factory. I'm trying to evoke the spirit of Steve McQueen, as you can see, got the 417, a waxed racing jacket. All I need now is my purse holes. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think, thoughts in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like this video, especially if you want to see more free and independent content. Onwards and upwards, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Ciao.